Hey y'all, it's Ashlyn here. So I have behind me, I don't know if you can see it, but I have like a big stack of books and you're on a stack of books that I have to talk about as well. But we're just gonna go through with what I can see first and stack them over here and possibly have a new pedestal so I can show you the other ones. So give me one second. All right, the first thing um, I got was Delicate Condition. And guys, if you don't know, I found out this is based on an American horror story. It's by Danielle Valentine. And you'll see something hilarious. I'm currently reading a book, uh, or I'm listening to a book on audio by Danielle Valentine called How to Survive Your Murder. So I have a little bit of a Danielle Valentine crush. Her writing is really, really good. So, all right, so I have Delicate Condition. It says her body is no longer her own. Anna Alcott is desperate to have a family, but as she tries to balance her life as an indie actress with a grueling IVF journey, she starts to suspect that someone is going to do great lengths to make sure that never happens. Crucial medicines are lost, appointments get swapped, cryptic warnings have her jumping at shadows, and despite everything she's gone through to make this pregnancy a reality, not even her husband is willing to believe that someone is playing twisted games with her. Then her doctor claims she's had a miscarriage, except Anna's convinced she's still pregnant despite everything the gray-faced men around her say. She can feel the baby moving inside her, can see the strain it's taking on her weakening body. Vague warnings become direct threats, and as her symptoms and sense of danger grow even more horrifying, Anna can't help but wonder what exactly she's carrying inside of her and why no one will listen when she says something that's horribly painfully wrong. This is literally delicate. There's a delicate, the new American Horror Story. This is literally that. No wonder they saw that. Okay, cool. So that's the first book I have. Like I said, How to Survive Your Murder. Um, this one says, rule number one, never go into the corn maze alone. Rule number two, nothing good happens on Halloween. Rule number three, never be distracted by a hot bad boy. And rule number four, don't die this time. So it sounds more like a happy death day and i'm at page 100 right now at the title of the chapter is obviously the cops aren't going to help you so i know i am that far in this book uh this is my physical copy though all right next i picked up uh caitlin starling's last to leave the room i heard this is supposed to be really really good i have no idea what it's about i, I can't remember what it's about let's put it that way it's a new novel of genre-busting speculative horror from Caitlin Starling, the acclaimed author of The Death of Jane Lawrence. It says, The city of San Sirocco is sinking. The basement belonging to Dr. Tamsin Rivers, the arrogant, selfish head of the research team assigned to find the source of the subsidence, is sinking faster. As Tasman grows obsessed with the distorting dimensions of the room at the bottom of the stairs, she finds a door that didn't exist before. In one night, it opens to reveal an exact physical copy of her. This doppelganger is sweet and biddable, whereas Tamsin is calculating and cruel. It appears fully terribly human, passing every test Tasman can devise. But the longer the double exists, the more Tamsin begins to forget pieces of her life, to lose track of time, to grow terrified of the outside world. With her employer growing increasingly suspicious, Tamsin must try to hold herself together long enough to figure out what her double wants from her, and just where the mysterious door leads to. That sounds interesting. I didn't realize it was a like a doppelganger book. That's cool. All right, I'm going to reach over here because I have two books over here. My neighbor came home. <laughs> okay, so I have Linda Howard's Drop Dead Gorgeous. She's complete a complete stunner being stalked by a cunning killer. This is really good. Um, the first chapter, though, is like a massive steamy sex scene. I was here for it. <laughs> um, Blair Mallory has already survived one murder attempt. Now, while planning her wedding, Blair once again dodges a bullet, or more precisely, a Buick. Blair wonders if her close call was simply a mishap, but the wondering stops when she nearly cheats death again in another seemingly innocent accident. Two strikes it is all it takes to convince Blair that she's back in someone's crosshairs, and this time no one will be watching Blair's back when she sets out to get the drop on her would-be killer before whoever it is finally drops her. I'm three chapters in, and I didn't want to put it down, but it was getting so late the other night, and I had to work in the morning. All right, next I picked up 
Jeanette Winterson's Night Side of the River. It's a bunch of different ghost stories. And I told myself I was going to read one every night, but that hasn't happened. Um, it's a gothic horror. In this delightfully chilling collection, the iconic Jeanette Winterson turns her fearless gaze to the realm of ghosts, interspersing her own encounters with the supernatural alongside hair-raising fictions. Lifting the veil between the living and the dead, Winterson spirits us away to a haunted estate that ensnares a nomadic young couple in its own dark past, a stage immersive ghost tour gone awry, a West Village seance that threatens the bounds between AI and reality, and a vacation home in the metaverse where a widow visits an improved version of her deceased husband. Gloriously gothic and unnervingly contemporary, Night Side of the River examines grief, revenge, and the myriad ways in which technology can disrupt the boundary between life and death. Winterson's latest is as ingeniously provocative as it is downright spooky. There's so many stories in here, too. I cannot wait. I know I say that, and then I don't do anything with it. All right. Um, there's a lot behind me, but I'm going to get on this stack here really quick, because these are the older books, then those are the newer ones. I mean, one of them was newer. But give me one second. Okay. Also, I'm doing this for, like, a mental health check. Like, um, I wanted to check in. Mental health isn't that great. But talking about books always makes me feel better. Um, surprisingly, and reading them sometimes helps too. I'm trying to stay away from anything cutesy and romancy right now. You guys kind of probably understand why. I don't think we broke up yet, but I'm not sure. It's been a few days. Yeah, it's been a few days. Um, no one's heard from him, so I'm not the only one over here, like, freaking out a little bit. Okay, this book, I have to literally write down everything in it. This is the 1,000 books to read before you die. This thing is huge. It talks about the books in it as well. Um, it gives you little excerpts of the book to see if you're actually going to want to read it or not. So I figure I'm going to need a notebook and pen when I go through this so I can write down all these books that I want to read. Not that I need to read. I mean... It just says to read a uh, life-changing list is what it says and this thing is ginormous this book as uh, it's over a thousand pages but that's because the end well it's 948 pages because of the index but i can't wait i'm excited i think this is going to be really fun to see what kind of books they're saying that you should read in your lifetime just saying i'm gonna shove this under here really quick sorry ah there we go much better Okay, next, give me one second, let me try and figure out, you see that disaster of a stack, <laughs> give me one second. Okay, much better, a little more organized now. All right, next, I've been waiting for this to come in forever and a century, oh my gosh, there's so much to learn in this. 800 pages but this is the blacks medical dictionary 43rd edition um as you guys know i am studying for to be a cna um i did the cna study guides and the practice tests and didn't do too terrible but didn't do too hot at the same time but i they got me this from the library they made sure to bring it in for me i'm literally the first one to get it it's from 11 of 23 and it just became november 1st the other day but they got this in for me um, because there's nothing with medical terminology on the uh, shelves. So they ordered this specifically so I could use it. And I really do genuinely appreciate it. That's why it's always good to be close with your librarians and the um, directors of your libraries. Because they will do things for you out of the norm and not charge you anything for it. You just have to make sure you keep these in good condition. So, I'm really excited about this, though. It says there's over 1 million copies sold, but this is, uh, it says detailed diagrams. It contains detailed diagrams and over 5,000 definitions of terms and concepts. It's an invaluable resource for anyone who needs a clear description of medical terms, nurses, healthcare students, health service managers, actuaries, lawyers, and journalists. Helpful appendices provide information on common medical tests and procedures, travel and health, measurements and medicine, and an address and 
address list of supporting professional associations. For this new edition, all existing material has been scrutinized and updated to ensure accuracy and precision, and 200 new entries have been added, including information on immunogenetics and immunopharmacology, biologic, biologics, Biologics, biosimilars, biomarkers, and telomeres, sicavarius and MERS, bariatric surgery, maturity onset diabetes of the young or MODI, well informed and authoritative websites for those seeking medical guidance. Oh my goodness gracious, there's so much in here. I'm going to be taking notes for days. And they told me I have two uh renewals after 30 days so i will have this for at least 90 days if that um but you can renew it up to three times or, or two times one is your freebie and then two more times after that so and they're about 20 to 30 days that you can hold on to these so i will be definitely using this and i'm very excited for it and nervous at the same time because that's very thick all right let's go to something a little different so I got the Stephen King um, book that I've never, well, it's it's one I've never read, but it is the CD to, audiobook on CD. This is called The Dark Half. It's 13 discs. It says, Dad Beaumont, a best-selling author with a twisted imagination, would like to say he had nothing to do with the evil that committed a series of monstrous murders, but he can't because he created it. It is 15 hours on 13 discs. It is um, read by Grover Gardner, author is Stephen Keene, obviously. Publisher is Penguin Audio. Release year is 2010. It's a fiction and the category is horror. I saw it and I've never heard of this and I've never seen a book called The Dark Half. So, and I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of, like, not antagonized me, but definitely made it where I wanted to pick it up. It's a lock with a chain. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so weird and so morbid sometimes. All right, let's go to something a little bit more fun. We got DVDs because we didn't have a hotspot, but we do now have a hotspot, thankfully, which is great because I've been waiting to post videos and I've been wanting to do my library hauls again with you guys. So I asked them to put this on hold for me. It's the new Joyride with uh, Aquafina and... Um, Mm -mm -mm. I can't remember who was in it. Aquafina and the chick from, um, I can't remember. The chick from, I don't even remember. I can't remember, guys. Anyway, I'm excited. Look at that. I get to do it. It's the one where they talk about doing, um, illegal drugs on a body part <laughs> so all right next i got escape room because i have seen this and i haven't seen it in a long while and i wanted to go through it again um i got as above so below because you know i just want to creep myself out and that's about the the paris catacombs then i got amityville the awakening i believe that's bella thorne it's from a producer of Split, Get Out in the Purge. Ooh, I forgot to get the Purge and Split. And then I wanted to get the other one, which was Glass, I think. Yeah, it's Bella Thorne, though. So, there's that. Then I found this one. It's called Miss Bala. Empowering, inspiring, and just so damn fun with Gina Rodriguez. I have no idea what this is about, but she looks like she kicks ass. And we need a female protagonist that kicks ass right now because I'm going through it and I just I want... Femin, feminine, feminine. Um, I also got missing from the minds behind searching. I need to get searching. I need to find where I can do searching. But this is missing. Um, this reminds me of. Isn't it? Wasn't it Amanda is missing or something? But hopefully it doesn't have a gruesome end like that. There was a movie I watched. Megan is missing. That's the one I watched. Oh my gosh, you guys. Terrible. Okay, and then I looked up, like, movies that are, like, missing, and it popped up with 
these three right here. So I have Gone Baby Gone uh, with Cassie Affleck, Morgan Freeman, Ed Harris. No idea. It looks interesting. I was looking for Gone Girl, but they didn't have it. I got Host, which is another found footage. And I got Spree, which is another found footage movie. I've never heard of this, but this looks so familiar. But it says, um, American Psycho for the Digital Age. Um, a bloody fun ride, funny ride through online hell. A serial killer flick that couldn't possibly be more of its moment. This is from 2020, I believe. I've never seen it. But it's a found footage. And I love me my found footage movies. I'm not even kidding you. I wasn't doing Unfriended, but I've seen Unfriended so many times. But Host is like Unfriended, but it's not Unfriended, but it's still found footage. Okay, and then to veer off a little bit, um, I got Pet Cemetery, of course. I I don't think I've ever seen it. So I was like, I don't think I've seen it, so. And then I got Villains. I'm not sure what this is about, but it looks fun. It looks like their heads are, like, stuck on the pretty little picket fence. The white picket fence that everybody wants in their life. And I got Black Christmas to start getting ready into the Christmas spirit. And of course, you got to have a little creepiness too. So there's that. And then I got more books. I got To Die For by Lisa Gray. It says, how far would you go for $1 million? This book, when I tell you this is good, I'm not kidding. This is freaking fantastic. I'm three chapters in because I couldn't play some of the mini games that they had at Bingo Tonight. So I was reading this while I was waiting for it to get back to the regular session. Three chapters in, baby. Three chapters. So good. Didn't even want to put it down. This one's called Woke Up Like This by Amy Leah. I have no idea. It was purple and it has balloons on it and it looked cute. So I picked it up. It says, two high school seniors, where will they be at 30? Oh, okay. They'll find out tomorrow. Planning the perfect prom is one last to do on ultra-organized Charlotte Wu's high school bucket list. So far, so good. If not for a decorating accident that sends Charlotte crash landing off a ladder, face first into her obnoxiously ripped arch nemesis JT runner. Worse, when Charlotte wakes up, she finds herself in an unfamiliar bed at 30 years old with her bearded fiancé runner by her side. Either they've lost their minds or they've been drop-kicked into adulthood, forever trapped in the 30-year-old bodies of their future selves. With each other as their only con constant, Charlotte and Runner discover all that's changed that was weird. in the time they've missed. Charlotte also learns there's more to Runner than irritating jock charm and that reaching the next milestone isn't as important as what happens in between. Navigating a series of adventures and a confounding new normal, Charlotte and Renner will do whatever it takes to find a way back to 17, but when and if they do, what then? Okay, so this sounds like that movie where she was in the coma. She had a cheerleading accident. She was in. She went into a coma and woke up when she was in her 30s and missed all of her high school prom everything. That's what exactly what this sounds like. But, I can't remember the name of that movie. However, it was good, but I think this might be a little bit better. Not sure. It seems like it might be fun. I'll let you guys know for sure if I even finish it. I'm hoping I do. Maybe I'll find it on audio. Maybe it'll be a better read that way. All right, then I got two Agatha Christie books because they're large print. And, well, I have another one somewhere. I have the AB... No, I don't remember which one I have. It's, uh, not sure. I'm not sure. It's in my bag somewhere, or it's at a client's house. I can't remember. But I got Agatha Christie books. Uh, I got Witness for the Prosecution and Other Stories. So this has a bunch of different stories in it. It says, Introducing 52 Christie Classics in all new large print editions, exclusively from G.K. Hall. Matched with Wits Legendary Sleuths, Miss Jane Marple, Hercule Poirot, and Tommy and Tuppence Bursford to solve the most popular mysteries ever written. Um, okay, so I'm not sure, but that's another one that has stories in it. So we'll, one night, once every night, or once every day, or 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. And then I have the ABC Murders, which I'm really excited about this. I'm nervous, but excited at the same time. Oh, okay. It's got stuff in the thing. Okay. I didn't realize there was synopsis right here. All right. The witness read the prosecution and other stories by Agatha Christie. Everyone knows a wife cannot be forced to testify against her husband. Why, then, does the apparently loving and devoted wife of an accused murderer choose to become a witness for the prosecution? Before finally answering this provocative question, Agatha Christie entertains and excites her readers with a plot breathtaking in its ingenuity. Famed for its double twist ending. Ooh, we love a double twist ending. The witness for the prosecution has thrilled millions in a stage in two film versions. The most famous starring Charles Lofton, Marlene Dietrich, and Tyrone Power. Besides the title novella, this collection includes 10 other versatile examples of Christie's skillful plotting and features the masterful sleuthing of her favorite detectives, Miss Marple, Hercule Poirot, Parker Pine, Harley Quinn, and a number of others. Hmm. Sounds fun. Oh, and this is going to be a breeze to read because the it's definitely a large print. I love me a large print read book. It just makes it so much easier to, you know, get through and whatnot. Okay, and then the ABC Murders, I've heard so much about, but I've never actually read it. It says, Hercule Perot shuddered when he received the first taunting letter. Look out for Andover on the 21st of the month, it said. The dapper Belgian detective feared murder and was seen proven right. The first victim was Miss Asher of Andover. The second was Betty Barnard of Bexhill on C. Next was Sir Carmichael Clark of Churston. Before each murder, Perot had received a note. Beside each body lay a railway, ABC. The guide opened to the town of the crime. It seemed a maniac was on the loose, intent on going through the entire alphabet. Perot had only the warning letters and his incomparable deductive reasoning to go on. But how could even the great Hercule Perot stop a cold-blooded murderer who seemed to be selecting victims at random? Again, I'm so excited to read this. There's so much commentary in it, too. And you guys know I read out commentary out loud. It just makes it easier. Okay. And then I apologize, but the last two things are CDs. Yeah, I know. What are those? You know, all these young kids are probably like, what are CDs? Well, what is a CD? It's a compact disc, honey, and we still use them to this day. Some of us do, at least. So I have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets because I just, I think I just finished watching Harry Potter the other day. I, just, I turned it in. So I have the Chamber of Secrets and I have the soundtrack right here to go with it afterwards. And then I have Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas soundtrack because duh I watched it in October and I watched it in September and I watched it in July and I'm gonna watch it in November and December too so I can't wait I think it has Sally's yep oh wait no yeah it has Sally's song in it okay but yeah that is everything I think that's absolutely everything I have you guys besides you know the fun little um, lucky day spot that you get for five days that gives you Wi-Fi for five days until my boyfriend's um, hotspot comes in. Then I'll have it for seven more days. So I was lucky to get one of those tonight. Um, but yeah, everything... Reading's been going really good, actually. I finished five books. I'm working on my sixth and then all of them. So... I'm not sure I'll get through all of them right away, but definitely through a good chunk of them. And I've worked through four books off of my bookshelf. So those ones are going to be getting sold. I am going to be downsizing still, um, no matter the situation. Uh, if, if I don't move, I still want to live more of a minimal life or make room for new stuff. Um, it just really depends on what's going on with everything. I think everything's going to be fine, though. I have a really bad feeling something happened, and that's why he hasn't contacted me. But that's besides the point. Um, doing this video, though, and watching all these movies, it just it kind of helps me get through the days. Um, days off are the worst. <laughs> um, days where I don't work until nighttime is the absolute worst for me. But I'm still working. I'm still doing what I'm supposed to. Yeah, I may get drunk here and there. 
you know, the past three days I've been drunk, but that's besides the point. Um, that's going to stop. I'm going to start focusing more on my body because I am sicker than a dog. I can barely eat anything. And I think that has a lot to do with my anxiety. On top of everything. Um, I do have these wonderful lists that I made. So we need to get through those. There's so many things to watch on YouTube right now. I'm so excited. I'm so happy that I have the ability to get back on my YouTube and everything. I love making videos. I love watching other people's content. Um, spooky content is where it's at for me. It doesn't matter if it's spooky season or not. Um, and my my book, you know, recommendation videos and things like that. I love watching those. Um, I can't wait to start watching everybody's TBRs and everything. I'm so excited. I just, I'm so happy. And then I get to start watching more things with my mom, too. Um, we were watching Delicate together and Goosebumps together. And there's one more. And then I started watching this one that takes place at an amusement park. And it's really good. I'm almost done with the season, though. And then it doesn't have any. But this will be the fifth book that will be off of my bookshelves, my personal bookshelves, not the library bookshelves. So I'm very happy and excited to state that um, because I, my goal is to get through all of those books and see if I'm going to keep any of them. I know I'm going to be keeping box sets. I don't know if I'm going to be keeping Ellen Hopkins box sets. I still have to read Traffic and I still have to read Fallout. So there are those. And once I finish those, I'm going to be taking some of my books to um, a bookstore in a different city close by that actually gives me money for my books. It may not be a whole lot, but it's going to be something. And it's only going to cost me about 50 bucks to get there and back. So, and if I have enough money, I'm thinking about doing a boudoir shot. Um, I have the opportunity to do it for my birthday and with it, me being 30, yes, you guys heard that correctly. I'm going to be 30, um, with me turning 30 and oh my God, next month. Oh my God. Okay. Well, with me turning 30 next month. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I want to do a boudoir shot. I have a little bit more of, you know, a love for my body right now. It looks really good. It's doing good. I've been working out. I've been eating healthier. I've been doing better. I mean, I kind of stopped eating healthy for the past over a week and, and a half. But I'm depresso espresso, you know, so I'm trying to get out of it, though. But I'm still going to work and doing what I'm supposed to. So I'm a functioning depresso espresso, which is not very normal. Um, just, you know being alone and at night, it just, it totally sucks. Just saying. But when I'm overnight at my client's house, it's so much easier to not like think about it because I'm so busy taking care of that person that I'm with that, you know, it just makes it a lot easier not to focus on it. So, but all right, I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. I'm going to watch one of these movies, I think, because I have a giant stack of movies or I'm going to watch YouTube. I think I'm going to watch YouTube and read. A chapter out of each uh, book to see how it's going. Um, I will update you guys in a few days. Oh, excuse me. Um, probably going to start. Oh, man. I have this kink in my shoulder. And I need to put this activating gel on it for pain. It's a pain relieving gel. Um, I'm hoping it works. But... I will update you guys in a few days. Uh, let you know how my Rudy journey is going. Thanks for watching. Bye.